بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Dear viewers, welcome to Youth Hour. Amar naam is Haq. Aapna shobha ka mishagato janat si. In our show today, we're going to talk about youth and religion. It's really, really important for our community and people around the world. So in our show, we have uh, two experts. And really, I'm really blessed to have these guys here. On my right, we have Muhammad Qureshi by Parvez. Welcome to our show. Yes, yeah, Assalamu alaikum, Isaac bhai. And Assalamu alaikum, respected viewers of uh, Ikra TV. Fantastic. And on my left, uh, we have Captain John Clifton. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, pleasure to be with you. Thank you for having me. Um, good to be with you, Brother Isaac. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. You know what? It's going to be my, my day, man. I'm enjoying it today. I was really excited to have you guys, honestly. <laughs> you know, what do you think about the topic? We've said youth and religion. Um, the reason is a lot of young people now that we see are um, they're not religious. So there's, there are a lot of people are religious. But but do you think there is an issue um, regarding young people and religion? John first. Yeah, I think there's definitely a lot of challenges uh, around young people and uh, the shaping of their religious identity. Um, we know that our, uh, our faith is shaped um, by our experiences as young people, not just our faith, but our whole life. And um, uh, for me, uh, my own personal experience was similar to that, um, that uh, I saw meaning in my faith as when I when I saw the example of others as a young person, and and that really that really changed things for me, and it really changed the path of my life. But do you think uh, is is there issues with the young people connecting with their faith and identity? Do you feel? Oh, definitely. I think uh, one of the biggest challenge uh, in our society now that uh, we are been uh, you know uh, we are in a crisis in terms of identity. Uh, our youths are, uh, you know, uh, been challenged with a lot of information, uh, with the technological advancement, and they are getting mixed message from different corners, and they are not being, in some aspects, guided properly, the, which is the right version of, uh, you know, they should follow. So they are they are uh, kind of puzzled with all this information and uh, they have been left behind to find out or determine which is the right path. And there, there comes the right guidance for, uh, from the parents and uh, you know, responsible adults. But yes, I mean, compared to our upbringing, today's youths are facing even greater challenge uh, you know, uh, to overcome their uh, you know, youthhood. I think uh, for me and you actually, we've grown up in the Muslim country yourself. Yeah. We've seen it as examples, our uh, granddads and the parents and uncles, uncles and everybody yeah. else. It was really easy for us to understand religion itself. But people who are born here, they live here, for them it's so difficult because they have so much mix and, and for them it's so difficult, it's not easy at all. Mm. And they're finding it uh, difficult to identify themselves as uh, whatever religion they follow. Do you think it's... I, I, I totally agree with you. I think when we were growing up, of course, uh, the only role models we had is our fathers, our uncles, our grandfathers, and, 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 and our neighbors. And uh, for any question uh, which came to our mind, we used to go, them, go to them and mm -hmm. try to find the solution from them. Or even go to the library to find out the books and read the books, you know, hardback books. But nowadays, Whenever uh, you see any youths, uh, they, they, you can see that they, they've got uh, their gadget in their hand. Yeah. Any question, they, they just tap into the you know, uh, internet. But how authentic the information is, how, how good is the guidance is, is the biggest uh, question. And um, one other thing is uh, we, the adults, uh, responsible adults, we are in a lot of cases detached ourselves from, from the youths, you know, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, communication with them. We, we live behind in a lot of ways. Particular reason you think, like, we don't speak the same language? We don't... Some, in, in most cases, I mean, those, those children are growing up here, you know, they're, they're, they're born and brought up in a, a you know, mixed community where uh, 
their peer group are from many different cultures and uh, you know uh, race and uh, we do not always affiliate with them you know so i think in terms of uh, you know uh, communication gap it is very big that's why mm -hmm. they are facing even bigger challenge nowadays John, um, you know, I'm really proud to live in UK because I, I, I love this country and um, mm. I feel this is my country, you know, and mm. um, we also see a lot of young people, um, like old people too, they're not into religion at all. Yeah. And they're getting a lot of information from probably YouTube and other places and um, they don't seem to connect him. Why do you think, is there, is there any other cases you think? Yeah, well, we have, um, we have all the information in the world in our pocket these days, um, which is um, quite a big change even from quite recently, uh, and um, which, which as you say means that we will look to our, our phone or whichever other device we have before, um, before speaking to our parents or before speaking to people in our family or anybody else in our community perhaps. Um, but that's in one sense, but in another sense what the information that we have there is just an even bigger community. Um, and so our, our ideas are, are shaped by what, by what we see and who we communicate with. Um, but I think really for me, um, what I see um, for young people and even older people as well, is that when, when people see uh, religion, and when people see faith put into action, uh, when, it, when they see that this makes a good, positive difference in the world, um, that that changes people's perspectives on it. Um, so growing up, for me, my parents, both Salvation Army officers, um, and uh, huge uh, parents are huge role models for of us course, anyway. Absolutely. And um, yeah. but, but I saw in my parents different ways in which their faith and their, their religion, their values were put into action. Um, I saw this in my, I saw this in my dad, I uh, saw this in my mum, uh, with work that my mum did on human trafficking um, and, and changing, changing and saving people's lives. And, and for me, because I saw that, that, that's really what made a difference for me. Um, there was a, recently there was a survey done and 41% um, of the young people, mm. they think religion is it, it's, it's a problem. Mm cause of all this war happening and this and that. It's 14 years old, 14 years old, think like that. 41% is a big number. And that means they are listening to a lot of media stuff, I'm assuming they're not, they mm -hmm. don't have many access to the right people. Yeah, well it's, it's um, there's, I think there's two aspects to that. So one, I think people see a lot of the bad that comes mm. from religion. Uh, but part of the reason why people see so much of the bad that comes from religion is because of uh, a particular perspective that often comes across in, in the mainstream media. Um, uh, generally, uh, the mainstream media likes to pick on bad news, yes. uh, is what yeah. I see. Yeah. Uh, whereas I, uh, where I live, uh, so I live in Ilford, um, in, in Redbridge, and I, I see a lot of, a lot of good news um, that is happening with the religious communities. Uh, and uh, harmony with in, with religious communities, so Christian and uh, and Muslim, but, uh, with Sikh community as well, Hindu, uh, the, the whole the whole range of uh, and, and Redbridge is you know like many East London boroughs, Redbridge is another very diverse uh, borough in the country. Uh, but still, there are some amazing examples of us working together uh, to make a real difference in the world. Do you feel like, um, like Brother Muhammad said, um, we have a communication gap with young people? You're young yourself. Do you find it difficult connecting <laughs> with young people? Uh, re well, young, relatively. <laughs> um, but I, I, think, I think there is, a, there is a, dis a disconnect generation to generation. I think that's inevitable. Um, I can see... I see that even in the generations that are older than me. Um, I see a, a disconnect there. And I think it's inevitable that there's a disconnect between me and younger generations as well, which is, yeah, it's very difficult because it means that our tradition is being redefined mm. all the time. Yes. Um, which is a challenge for those of us who are older. Uh, but I think there's something about recognizing that uh, when we talk about young people are the future, mm. 
and yeah, young people are the future, but they're the now as well. Um, and, and there's an obligation for us in, in our communities where we're, if we're older or more senior, to, to be willing to be shaped by the perspective of younger people as well. Yes, um, right. Yeah. Um, also in the survey, we say it's only 12% of the religious leaders or, or, or scholars are connected with young people. Only 12%. It's quite very, very less for me. I find it, it amazing <laughs> because this is we're saying our faith will save people from mm. the hellfire. Our faith will shape the people's life into better human mm. beings. And we believe that, definitely. There's no it doubt is, in it. it and if you're not connecting with the young people, only 12%, is that, does it make sense? Well, I'm not wondered. I think uh, the most important thing, what we are saying, the biggest challenge is the communication. We have to speak the right language and we are not speaking the right language That's at, at present. I mean, I've got, uh, I've got three children, and my youngest one is recently become a teenager. <laughs> and I mean, uh, I take uh, time to talk to him. I give time to him every week. I've got a routine time uh, just to speak to him and see how he's thinking, what he's doing. This is the most important thing. You have to uh, be on their shoes what they're facing, what challenges they're facing, how they enjoy thing. If, uh, if, you are, if we are just serious about everything and just instruct them, it's not going to work uh, as much as we become their friend mm. and you know, work with them. So what's happening now with our religious leaders, they're just instructing them to do this, go to do the prayer, learn this, that, you know, and, and uh, it's not working. I think we have to change our ways of, you know, guiding our children. Even the language yeah. itself is a problem because those, genuinely those guys don't speak Bengali at all. <laughs> they can <laughs> say yes, uh, they can say all that stuff, yeah, yeah. but they don't speak back. You can tell that they don't, yeah. they're not comfortable. Yeah. So when you tell them something in, in, in their own language, when they speak English, at least try to communicate in, in what, which is our most important part is religion. Absolutely. So when, they, when you go to khutbah, mm. Most of the boys, young people, they don't understand the khutbah because it's in, it's in Bengali mostly. Yeah. Most of the places, mm -hmm. not in all places, in English. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to learn from that. Yeah. If we don't want to lose them, that means we have to give them the, in their own space and give them their own way they understood their message. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think one uh, thing I, I uh, enjoy, I live in uh, near uh, Green Street in Forest Gate. And I go to a mosque which is managed by a you know, Pakistani community. And in our khutbah, the Imam gives khutbah in Urdu. Some part I do understand, some part even I don't. Mm -hmm. And when I think about my son, I, I, I believe that he does, uh, doesn't understand even 1% of it. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. But then again, he's sitting there for half an hour, he lis he's listening because he's going with me. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. So what Isaac Bay is saying is absolutely true. We have to create an environment where the communication gap is been bridged properly so that they understand what we are saying and they enjoy it. If they don't understand and enjoy it, then they're not going to learn, they're not going to be interested. When, if we think ourselves, we are sitting here, if we don't enjoy what we are doing, what we are talking about, that we are contributing our knowledge for the society, and if even one person benefits from it, that's, that's an achievement for us. If we don't think this way, then you know, we're not going to enjoy it and it's not going to work. The same thing, I think for our children, most important part is to make them enjoy the religion and, and the guidance. Then they'll learn from, learn from us, otherwise they're not going to learn from us. John, can I ask you something? Why is it religion is so important for people to survive? What happens if you don't have religion but you're a good person? Um, I think... Um, I hope I didn't ask you a harsh one. That's a, that's a very difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think the, the reality of it, so, so from my experience, so at, at the Salvation Army in, in Ilford, so we're one week into uh, running a night shelter. Um, and uh, we go from the beginning of December through to the beginning of March. And, um, and this is, so this is hard work, right? It's, 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 really, it, it's really challenging. Uh, to work with people who are in very great need. So we have 28 people who are sleeping on the streets otherwise coming in. Now, for me, 
uh, without my faith, with, without uh, the firm conviction that this is something that God wants me to be doing, um, without that spiritual depth, um, I, I would not be able to sustain this work o over such a period of time. And this is, a, this is our sixth winter. Um, by all means, we get tired. Um, you know, come January, we, we all get colds and we get uh, tonsillitis and all these <laughs> sorts of things um, because we're, we're, you know, late nights and so on and so forth. But, um, but what sustains us is, is something very, something at the very depths of our, of our being. Um, and so I think... The reason I asked you, actually, there yeah. was a new survey done by YouGov, okay. and okay. I said only 25% of the young people said, I believe in God. Yeah. It's a very small number, 25%. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that says something for us. So we have to be very, uh, we're a lot of work, man. I mean, there is a, there is a lot of work, definitely. Um, <coughs> but I think there's also, in, in terms of what you were talking about around language and, and not just whether we understand each other, but also in terms of people being able to give an account of what they're doing. Because I, I see people behaving I see people behaving like they believe in God. I see people behaving like they um, have deep religious convictions about how they relate to other human beings. Um, but I think they don't necessarily have the language, the words, to give an account of what, of what they're doing. Um, and, and I find those conversations really interesting. Um, so that they, because so, we have a number of people who come to the night shelter to volunteer. I'm just using the example, night shelter is just one example. Uh, but people come to the night shelter, they volunteer, um, but often they go away changed more than, um, than the people that they've been serving. Because but do you think, in, you know, in our institutions, I'm talking about the Muslims and yeah. the Christian institutions, yeah. do you think we could do much better? Mm. Like first thing, you've got to, you've got to, we've got to find a way to get them to respect others. Mm. Otherwise, if you just keep on saying, you know, negative stuff about others, mm. he's going to feel, I know you, you're telling me, I, don't, I never see you doing anything good. Mm. I mean, especially the teachers or the whoever's telling them yeah. what to do, actually, in the first place. Yeah. If it's not an example, then it's going to take you everything under the carpet. Yeah. So you, in, in our institutions, do you think we are doing enough to give them practical reasons and examples? Look, mm. you could do this, you could achieve that. Yeah. Um, I think it's uh, one, of the, one of the ways that I find uh, being able to meet people who are different from me um, is, is through community organising. So through um, particularly through an organisation like Citizens UK, through Telco, um, London Citizens. Is there a solution? Um, because we're going to come into second half solutions. Uh, do, you, do you want to come First to that First half, later? only problems. Yeah, no, well, this is, I think, I, I think without a, without a mechanism, I, I guess what, in terms of a problem then, is, is, is how few mechanisms there are for um, the different institutions to be able to meet each other. Mm. Um, so I, I we could walk past each other in the street, uh, and we, we see each other, mm. and we coexist, but we, don't, but we don't necessarily speak to each other. That's a big issue, isn't it? I don't know, when I was in 80s, yeah. good morning, is, is in the morning, good morning was a good thing. I yeah. mean, now it's not anymore. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you see Salam in I that think, level I of... I think it's the same thing, uh, as you said. A community is divided mm. by a lot of things in terms of politics, in terms of media influence and stuff. Mm. When children goes to school, you'll see two school coexist, but uh, in a different community goes to different school. Yeah. The whole device is designed in a way to split the community. Yeah. I think you are absolutely right. The problem is those of us who are managing our community, we are not looking at in a way that uh, we are creating a problem for the future, for our youths and our children. And we need to think uh, in our thick and hard and see that uh, as we are working together now, in mm. wherever we go in a working environment, we go to street, we to go to market, we deal with uh, you know each other, mm. different community people and everybody, you know you know in, in a happy time and in a challenging time. Likewise, we have to grow ourselves together, grow ourselves out of this problem, mm. identity crisis or uh, whatever we call it, together. 
if our children do not believe in a religion or, or you know, a, a good culture, mm. good humanity, then we have got a big, big problem ahead of us. Mm. The community will be, you know, uh, divided in uh, many different ways, you know, uh, and uh, uh, in future it's going to be even bigger problem and it, it, can, it cannot be yeah, easily resolved. Yeah, recently know. also in, in, in um, a popular area, actually, there recently there were a lot of stabbing happening. The, the yeah. one person died, and another person attempted to murder. Mm -hmm. You know, this is all what the young people are doing. I mean, they're young; they got a lot of yeah. time in their hands. And if we all olders and we don't do anything, we stay at home and just watch TV mm. or watch my interview. <laughs> it's not good enough. I mean, <laughs> honestly, yeah. we need to go out because this—they're harming somebody. They'll, these guys' life, whoever done it, mm. his yeah. life is almost finished. He's going yeah. to be criminalized. He's going to be in the prison. Yeah. And uh, can you imagine the people around him, his family, yeah. his brothers and sisters, mm. and everyone's going to get affected. Yes. Mm. It's quite serious, like we uh, need to go out and, and talk to people. I mean, how often, I don't know if you've seen, how often we say to um, our neighbors, mm. people from different communities, especially I'm talking about, yeah. hi, hello, or salam, or good morning. How often we do that? Yeah. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see that anymore, man. No, it's, it's, not, it's not a common thing now. Um, we we come home. Uh, we we drive. You know, we, when we go out in the morning, uh, if we happen to be going out at the same time as somebody else, you know, that's great. But otherwise, you know, we either get into our car or we're just walking straight off to the bus or, or wherever. Uh, and we're in a rush. Yeah. We've got to be yeah. somewhere. <laughs> We've got to be somewhere quick, um, because you know, whatever we're doing is is very very important. Um, <laughs> And it's too important to stop to say hello, yeah. uh, and so, I and, and that means we don't even know the people who are, who yes. are living next door to. Yeah. That, that's, that's scary. Did, did you have <laughs> the same issues in in in, in uh, old days? I'm talking about you know, earlier. Oh, early. no. I think um, even now. I mean, I say hello to my neighbors whenever I see them. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's not the case, uh, you know, vice versa. Some of my neighbors they don't say, you know, uh, they don't do as I do. Mm -hmm. But of course, when we do something, our mm -hmm. children see this mm -hmm. and they try to, you know, uh, copy this mm -hmm. if it is a good thing. And, and that's how we teach uh, our children, mm -hmm. our next generation. So you're absolutely right. We are lacking all this and we should even practice even more you know, how to bring the community together. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I moved into my new area, actually, so it, it was self-interest, actually. I said, I have to make friends. And I like being, talking to new people, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and I would f look for any excuses just to go to and say hello to that person. Yeah. Any excuses. Oh, you got the bag with you. Give me a hand. I'll do it for you. <laughs> Who are you? I haven't seen you before. Oh, just, I'm, I moved in a new place here. Yeah. So I've, I made, al almost in, in the first week, I got to know every single one in my building, especially. Yeah. Yeah. And I, because I made the effort. Yeah. And I told my kids, I said, if you could do the same, honestly, they will respect you Absolutely. for that. Yeah. That's what I'm supposed to come in the next round, but mm. I said in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. doesn't matter. <laughs> Is there any other particular problem do, you, do we find for our young people um, to link up in particular? Um, I, I think generally speaking, so a, a big part of our religious identity is, is our uh, is public life um, and being involved in public life as well. Um, so there's, I don't see a, a big divorce between uh, political or public life and our, and our religion. Um, but politics seems to be the thing that changes the world. Um, and if our, if our religion is not seen to be connected to that in some way, um, then I think that, that that's another disconnect. I mean, we're talking a lot about mm. fragmentation yes. in, in many different ways. So between generations, between communities, yes. um, but also within different aspects of our life. So yes. political life, social life, economic life, religious life. Yeah. And if religious life is not connected to these different elements in some way, um, then it, it, mm. it becomes... Like a part-timers. Yeah, it's like this is, you know, if, if you're Christian, this is what I do on a Sunday morning for a couple <laughs> of hours. I yeah. go pray, sing some songs, listen to a sermon, and then I go back home and, and get on with my life. Mm. Um, so I think there's a responsibility for, uh, for our religious issues, as, as you said, to be, to be very directly connected to the different facets of our life. 
um, you know, how, how does our religion shape the way that we treat money? How does our religion shape the way that we vote? How does our religion shape the way that we, um, the way that we purchase goods? Mm -hmm. All of these, how, how does it shape the way we treat our neighbor, yeah. whether we're talking to them or not? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, I, and I think, as, as a, you know, when you're, particularly when you're a young person, so I, I mean, if we're thinking about teenagers, for example, Teenagers would want to see that teenagers are smart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're yeah. intelligent, and, and even you know, I've I, I have two children, a three-year-old and a and a, a one-year-old tomorrow. She'll be one. Okay. Um, they're smart. Even even that even that age, they know if something doesn't make sense, and if something doesn't make sense, they'll call you out on it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think I think in children and and in Younger do you people, feel there's a, do you there's think a prophetic yeah. voice that comes there as well to challenge us on the integrity of our of what we say? Do you think it's it's one of one of the issues is like we don't know our both faith. You know, we live in the UK, mm. but we don't know my neighbours, so I don't know his faith. That could be a, a issue. I think definitely. Yeah. yeah. Because once you know, actually, you get powered, isn't it? I know about that person. Yeah. I know about these issues he goes yeah. through. Are they wrong or right? That's a different issue. But I know. Um, before we go for a break, can I ask, uh, um, we live in the UK, if I ask you how much do we know about, okay, I'm going to come, after, come to you after the break. Dear viewers, stay with us, we're going to go for a small break inshallah. I'll see you after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. <laughs> Thank you.